Friday, February 17th, and uh, we have the uh, Vermont Housing Conservation Coalition with us uh, this morning. And uh, I, I know some of you must have partaken their little coffee and goodies upstairs. And uh, so we'll uh, get started and uh, hear from them. Uh, I know Abby uh, quite well, and I uh, say so you're going to lead off, Abby. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you can introduce your guests. We'll introduce ourselves. We got three new members uh, on the Ag Committee. So, hi, Brian Collimore, representing the Rutland District. I remember to the north with Fairfax. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Brian. Oh, I'm the yeah. senator from Bennington. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Rich Westman, the senator from the Whale. I apologize. And, and I'm Bobby <laughs> Starr from Orleans County, and I also represent four communities in uh, Caledonia County. And don't uh, by, uh, you know, he has, he's a slow learner. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So welcome, and um, it's uh, nice to have you folks with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Um, Abby White, I'm with the Vermont Land Trust, and I'm also one of the co-chairs of the Vermont Housing Conservation Coalition. And we are here in the State House today with um, many housing and conservation leaders from around the state who deploy the resources of VHCB in communities. And so we're here to, to talk to you about our work and the impact of those investments. So just a little bit of background, as I said, VHCC, we're comprised of about 50 organizations. And um, our goals are to create affordable housing, conserve land, <coughs> and really strengthen the vitality of communities. One of the things that's most unique about VHCC the coalition and uh, BHCB, the housing, the, the, the board, is that it's always had a mission of uniting housing and conservation, recognizing that when you invest in both, communities thrive. They're not one or the other, it's, it's both together. And especially in this moment where um, we're experiencing growth, we have some, some challenges in the state and attracting people to, to come and live here, we have a housing crisis, it's always just important to keep in mind that housing and conservation really go together. And so of course, because this is the Agriculture Committee, Agriculture and Forestry, we're here to talk to you about uh, the work that has been happening in agriculture. So the coalition is asking the General Assembly to this session to fully support funding for VHCB. That would equate to $27.8 million for fiscal year 24. Uh, last year, we got close. You all increased the base budget by $10 million, and so that, that got us closer to full statutory share, but again, it's, um, it's less than what's needed to, to meet needs of communities. So I'm going to step away. I'm going to step out of the chair here and let the, the real heroes talk to you about their work. Um, so I'm joined today by, well, I don't see Mark yet on the call, Linda, is he, is he here? No. Okay, well, well, we'll kind of switch the order, but um, we'll start with Gabby Tewitt, who is here from Old Road Farm, so Gabby. And then um, Julie Curtin from Champlain Housing Trust. And then Mark Laurie from Rupert Valley Holsteins. So that's the crew that we've got for today, and thank you for having us in. Yeah, well, glad uh, you could make it. So, Gabby, uh, you want to sit at sure. the table and, and tell us a little bit about where you're from and yourself? Yeah, um, my name's Gabby. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to my story today. Um, I, my husband and I run Old Road Farm in Granville, Vermont. Uh, we grow on about three acres, um, diversified organic vegetables. Uh, we have six greenhouses for season extension and uh, winter growing. We employ about three to four uh, people during the growing season. 
and our market include uh, local grocery stores and co-ops, um, farmers market, a farm stand, and um, some restaurants and um, catering businesses. Do you? Um, I don't want to change your ch train of thought. But no, sorry. Uh, do you sell any to your local schools? No, we, we haven't um, done schools. We are working with Acorn, um, just like that Addison County relocalization um, project, and uh, they're helping us to get into more institutions such as hospitals and schools. Uh, it would just be a bigger jump in scale, which um, we're just going into our fourth season on this property. So still slow. Yes, yeah, still growing, <laughs> yeah. but would like to get to would like to be able to grow for larger institutions. Um, but um, it has a nice started farming in college. Um, we had a lot of great role models um, and we knew that this was something that we wanted to do for ourselves and our community. We felt that um, farming and growing healthy and sustainable food was a great way to be able to contribute to our community. Um, so in 2016 we started, uh, we leased some land and the land that we leased was super hilly and rocky, probably only an acre to grow on. Um, so we knew that if we wanted to uh, be able to do this, you know, for the long haul we needed uh, more farmable land. Um, so we worked on our business plan. We had a lot of help from a lot of great organizations like NOFA and NRL, and then brought our business plan to Vermont Land Trust and they helped us to uh, find our forever farm in Granville. Um, we have about 24 acres, um, so a lot of room to grow. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, in 2019 we purchased our land, so going into our fourth growing season. <coughs> Kind of narrow down through Greenville, right? Yep. So you have to be along the river there yep. somewhere. We're, we're right along the river, yep, right on the yep. 100. Um, so prime agricultural soil. Yeah. 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 Uh, Brian? Thanks, Mr. Sure. So did you go to school for agriculture or did you just sort of start volunteering and working on a farm where you were at school? Um, so I studied community development and with a minor in food systems, so not. So more of like the social side of farming, yep. not so much like the technical side of farming. Um, but like I said, we had like a lot of great role models, a lot of great teachers along the way. And you know, we're still getting a lot of help from like UVM Extension for all our technical help. Um, yeah. So it's, it's great to be in a, such an ag state that's, that supports a lot of farmers. Were you at UVM? Yeah, uh, yeah I was at UVM. That's yeah. great, mm -hmm. thank you. And um, yeah, my husband and I were first generation farmers. We had little um, access to land and capital. Um, so being able to have affordable farmland was crucial in our business growth. We wouldn't be able so to. You own the you own the land that you're actually farming then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Right. And you know, like one of the biggest obstacles for young farmers is access to land and capital. Vermont has such a rich agricultural history and landscape and we want to keep supporting that and you know we want to keep seeing that in our state. I think it's really important to be able to support young farmers and keep funding these programs like BTV and BLT that helps young know, farmers get on the land. Yeah. Um, no, that, uh, <clears throat> that's been a great uh, program uh, BHCB and uh, we, uh, well, I used to be in the house and Rich used to be in the house and I think you were there when we set that up, I think. Uh, I was one of the sponsors of the yeah, original bill. And, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I helped organize the trip to Connecticut. Yeah. Did you get in on that? It was American Farmland Trust on the firm next door to mine. And American Farmland Trust paid for that trip for hmm. us to go down there. Hmm. I knew I that was 25 years ago. And Jeannie and Duffy. Was, I knew I'd made a mistake by not going on the trip. Jeannie and Duffy helped organize yeah. the trip with me. Yeah, I sent the vice chair of the committee uh, to. I mean, I had 50 balls in the air back then, uh, 
and uh, so I sent the vice chair and, and the reports that we got back to the committee were, you know. That was Jane Ann, right? Pardon? That was Jane Ann. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, we better work on this, and we worked with others, of course. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, been a good, good thing you know, that we did that's helped a lot of young people get started, and it helped in transitioning from one family, you know, to a younger generation. Uh, no, it's been a good, uh, been a good run. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I just say, in Connecticut, when we started the program, the land and the housing were separate, and they um, had an implosion of the whole program, and they reorganized the program in Connecticut to include housing and land, and. And we came just about the time they were reorganizing the whole program and then followed that. It makes a very strong group if you put housing and land conservation together. Yeah. You know, and we can all account to something. And here in the legislature, you've got to be able to count in the House six and 76. If you can't get there, may as well fold your tent up and go home because you're losing. <laughs> um, but no, this is, it's been great. And I, I don't know if we ever have done an inventory of numbers of how many young families have gotten started through, through this and bought homes through VHCB and the land trust. But, those numbers would be high. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, any other good news? Uh, no. Any bad news? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to take the bad with the good. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, th thank you for uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, taking course. your time. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thanks. So. Uh, Julie? Well, we have Mark, Lori, oh, Mark. who's here, so we'll, we'll go to Mark first, if that's okay. Yep, no, that's fine. Good morning, Mark. Morning. Glad to be here. Well, we're, here, okay? we're glad to have you. Okay. Uh, we're getting a thunderstorm down here in Bennington County, so if, if you lose me, it's probably because we lost power, but... Uh, Anyway, I'm Mark Laurie uh, from Rupert, down in Rupert, over on uh, the west side of uh, Bennington County, near the New York border. Uh, I farm with my brother, uh, twin brother Mike. We milk uh, 400 cows and crop approximately uh, 900 acres. My brother also has uh, a 10,000 tap sugar bush. Um, we, uh, we made a sizable investment in a new parlor five years ago, um, to bring our farm up to speed and, and stay in it for the long haul. And the next generation would be the fourth generation is, is already on board. So, uh, Rupert's always been a farming community, um, We've got a nice working landscape with two uh, small villages. And uh, there's been a fair amount of uh, conservation projects that have, that have gone through the town. And I think helping preserve its character and its working landscape. Uh, we were able to conserve 177 acres of the home farm uh, last year with with help from some of the funds from VHCB and um, that's up along the White Creek and there's a 236 acre woodlot that's adjacent that's that's part of that parcel uh, that we hope to uh, uh, continue the conservation easement on that in the future. It's also part of a, a block 
uh, here in Rupert that extends over Rupert Mountain into the Meadowy Valley and up through Pollitt. Uh, there's quite a sizable block of conserved properties that uh, I think, again, are, are keeping the working landscape and, and um, nice blocks of, of forested land and woodlot uh, for wildlife habitat and uh, water and air quality control, especially with the climate change that we all know is going on. Uh, we were also able to purchase a conserved farm next door right on the New York border um, in 1998. Uh, it's part of our crop base and it was an important purchase and, and has helped us uh, remain viable. I think uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's only uh, four farms in Bennington County now uh, shipping milk, uh, but there are other farms uh, doing some other things, vegetables and stuff, but um, uh, dairy has always been uh, the, the core the, the core farming activity. Um, I think land conservation goes hand in hand with keeping uh, prime ag land in, in farming. Uh, we have to preserve farm ag land. It is what feeds uh, our people and the world. And um, that is, that's critically important to any farm that, uh, that has prime ag land. And uh, even though we need housing, uh, let's try to find uh, someplace else for that. Um, the dairy business uh, it's always kind of been a tough business. Uh, I've been in it for 36 years and my father and grandfather before that. Uh, you somehow find a way to keep uh, to keep going, but um, uh, I think these the programs that we've had come along uh, are critically important to dairy farms. Um, I think uh, the investment uh, that are made with these tax dollars uh, they're gonna they're gonna benefit future generations and. Uh, it, it will, it does make a difference. Um, in conclusion, I've seen, uh, like I said, a fair amount of conservation projects come through, uh, come through our town. I, I was able to serve on our town select board for, for 26 years. And uh, the select board has always supported uh, these projects and they've been supported uh, throughout the community. Um, I think, uh, I, again, I'll, I'll just reiterate the, the character uh, and the charm of our, of our villages uh, mixed in with the farmland um, sets our town apart and also other towns, I'm sure, uh, that are extremely similar. Um, with that, I'd like to uh, thank you for listening to my story. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for supporting uh, the VHCB funding. Well, thank you very much. Uh, before we ask any questions, I want to tell you that if your lights go out from the thunderstorm, Brian Campion is the guy that caused that rain. You um, could go over to his house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, do you farm? Um, do you is your farm anywhere near where Bob Graff's farm uh, near his farm, or was his farm and? The Graff Farm uh, in Rupert. Uh, the Graff Farm is uh, partially in in Rupert and Paula. It, it, it was then down to the next generation, the Russo Farm, and um, uh, they're oh, they're over in the Meadowy Valley, which is up over the hill from us. Uh, we're we're over right. on the New York border, so we're not far apart. But you got a little hill to go over there. Yeah, there's a there's a small hill there that uh, well, the milk trucks tend to go around it, 
and uh, <laughs> some of the other heavy trucks. But, yeah. but uh, it, it runs right through the middle of town, but uh, we can't change our geography. No, no. Uh, so uh, who do you sell your milk to, uh, Mark? Um, we, we're a member of uh, Agamar Co-op, uh, proud members. We, we, we've hosted uh, Open Farm Sunday uh, several times and get great turnouts uh, for people um, that, you know, want to see what's going on on a farm. And, and uh, um, we, we've hosted this. Uh, we, we milk three times a day, so they're able to uh, watch milking. And uh, it's amazing how many people, um, they want to learn where their food comes from and they want to know who produces it. And they, uh, they're always very intrigued with all the uh, aspects uh, that go into dairy farming. And uh, uh, we've, been, we've had the privilege of uh, helping to educate some of those folks. And uh, I think that makes a big difference as well. Yeah. Uh, no, those events are, are great. Uh, I've attended some when they've had them up north. And uh, it's amazing the crowds that that people that turn out uh, for those, uh, great. Um, so you do dairy, you yeah. do dairy and maple and some wood. Do you do you do some wood as well? Uh, of course, I, my wood lots are all under forest management. Um, we 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 don't do we don't have any uh, cuts in the next ten years. So. Uh, I'm, I'm not like in the firewood business or anything like that. Uh, so, so we're not really, we're not really in the wood business right at the moment, but we hopefully as timber grows, uh, we might have something to sell. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, questions from the committee? No, 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 very good. Thanks, Mark. Well, thanks, Mark. Th thanks uh, very much for your time this morning. I know you must be busy and we uh, appreciate uh, you giving us that uh, the time. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so. We go to Julie. Okay. Julie. Good morning. morning, Julie. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So sorry, I can't be there in person today. Um, and I appreciate that this option is available to us so I can join you uh, this morning. I'm Julie Curtin. I'm the Director of Home Ownership at Champlain Housing Trust. I'm um, here today to talk about the Farm Worker Housing Program that's funded by VHCB. VHCB asked CHT to administer this program a, a little over a year ago. So I wanna report on what we've done so far and talk about where we're going. Um, I know you've heard about this program already this year and last year, so I'll, I'll try to hit the highlights, but just we felt it, it would be important and helpful for you to hear from, from those of us who are uh, implementing the program and doing the work. Um, before I talk about that, I just need to say I did work for Vermont Land Trust from 2011 to 2019, and um, one of the last, I was a, a in-house counsel for VLT. So I did a lot of the farm transactions, including Gabby's farm. So it's pretty cool to hear how that farm's being used now. And um, I remember when uh, VLT purchased the property and held it for quite some time before finding a person who, who was a good fit for that to be their forever farm. And one of the things that took a little while to make that transition was was the farmhouse. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely old farmhouse, but it needed a little TLC. So farm, uh, farm housing was something that was very much part of my experience at Vermont Land Trust on the conservation side. And clearly now it's a big part of the work that I'm doing at CHT. Also thrilled to have Mark here because Mark, we don't have any farms in our farm worker housing program in Bennington County yet. And we would really love to see that in round two. So, um, Hopefully he can spread the good word about the resources we have. Um, I also wanted to note that one of our program participants, Bill Soar, who is the um, 
founder and owner of Champlain Orchards in Shoreham, um, had wanted to join us today, but had a conflict um, and so has submitted written testimony um, that the committee um, we submitted that uh, on Wednesday. So he, he has provided some written testimony just to give you a sense of his experience as a, a farm, farmer who's participated in, in the program and what an important impact having these dollars has been for him to improve his uh, farm labor housing. Um, VHCB over the course of the last two years has um, provided Champlain Housing Trust with $2.2 million for farm worker housing. And we have two programs to, um, to implement those funds and improve housing for farm workers. Um, this followed a needs assessment that VHCB commissioned in 2021 um, that identified the sort of scope of the need for farm labor housing in Vermont and um, has been, um, you know, we, we feel has been successful so far. Last year, um, we received half a million dollars in loan capital to make repair loans to existing farm labor housing. Um, our loans go up to $30,000 per loan and are forgiven over the course of 10 years. So every year that the housing, once the project's complete, every year the housing is used for farm labor housing, 10% uh, of the loan principal is, uh, is written down. So that at the end of 10 years, there's a zero balance there's no interest and no payments due. So, um, so it's, a, it's a great program in that way. The focus of yeah. the, the funds is to make health and safety repairs to um, existing housing. And um, when, when you all had Dan Baker in maybe a week and a half, yeah. two weeks ago, great. So yeah. Dan, Dan gave you a lot of detail and I won't go into that today um, because he, um, he's a, been a wonderful partner for this project um, and he's great at crunching the numbers and, and able to look at well where, what, types of, what types of projects are people um, in need of. And, and I will say we, we certainly saw the full range of plumbing, electrical, weatherization, um, septic replacements, new wells and water lines, um, all the things that you can imagine, uh, you know, old housing in Vermont needs. Um, and, and, you know, as you can imagine, it's old housing and it's also um, housing that's in pretty heavy use with um, people who are working on the farm, night shift, day shifts, and um, new workers coming and going. So we had 45 requests for that half a million dollars and were able to, to fund 15 farms. Those 45 requests amounted to $1.8 million in estimated project costs. I would venture to guess that the actual costs were quite a bit higher. Um, as we found, as we go on the farm as part of our process, we, we um, make a site visit and use a checklist to inventory all health and safety improvements that need to be made with our funds. We often are finding initial project scopes um, expand um, after that after that site visit and um, farms are needing the full $30,000 in order to complete all of the work. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we did receive applications from almost everywhere in the state um, except for Bennington, Essex and Grand Isle counties. So for round two, we're really hoping to, hoping to see um, some farms come in from those parts of the state. Um, good news is eight, eight Projects are underway and four almost done, and we are getting ready to close on additional projects uh, very soon. Also, great news is that VHCB um, provided us with a second round of capital for repairs. So we have another seven hundred seventy-four thousand dollars to make repair loans on farms, and we've just opened applications for those funds. Um, those application that application window will be open for another couple of months, and. Um, we then will uh, assess, essentially assess the applications that we receive to award um, what we think will be about another 25 repair loan projects with this second round of funding. Um, so we're, we're really grateful to have some additional funds. Um, but if you add up the 500 and the 774, it still isn't uh, even the 1.8 million that we received in the first round. And we, we do know that there are there are farms that weren't able to apply last year that are expecting to apply this year. Um, so we, th we think that the, 
essentially the program's oversubscribed and, and there, is, there is a great need. Um, I also wanted to touch on, I, I said there's, there are two programs we're doing. We, we, are doing a, we are also doing a pilot replacement program. Um, this is to uh, where, where there are some farms that, for example, have had to make a makeshift apartment in the barn or have a 1970 mobile home that's sinking into the ground and needs to be 100% replaced. Um, these are much more expensive projects and much more complicated, but we do have um, 620,000 from VHCB to, impl to, to implement uh, what looks to be three replacement projects to learn how could we have a program that meets the need on farms that, um, that need to actually replace their housing. So once we mm -hmm. learn more about that program, we'll be reporting back to VHCB. Yeah, Dan, uh, uh, Dan touched on that replacement uh, uh, program when he was in uh, last week, I think it was. Uh, you know, it's just the, the present homes are so bad that it's just cheaper to replace them than, and replace them with very uh, efficient, uh, you know, energy efficiency and and new watering and new water and uh, electrical and it's just better than trying to replace what's there in some cases so that's good yeah. i think brian had a question yeah thanks julie so the counties that you haven't heard from do you do much in the way of tell us a little bit about the outreach to uh get people to apply you mentioned i think bennington essex franklin possibly Brenda. Grand yeah, um, we we partnered with other homeownership centers around the state. For example, Rural Edge, based in St. Johnsbury, um, to to um, so that they're informed of the program. And as they're out in their communities doing home repair loans, they're also um, right, the, for the first round we're able to post flyers about the program. Also, in our partnership with UVM Extension, um, Dan has organized. I believe five stakeholder meetings, statewide stakeholder meetings over the last couple of years um, where we've had attendance from uh, folks from Farm Bureau, from um, Champlain, uh, the Champlain Valley Dairy Association. So uh, a variety of agricultural related groups have come to those stakeholder meetings. They're all on Zoom to learn about the program, uh, the Agency of Ag has participated in those meetings. And then um, they've been able to disseminate information about the program through their, their listservs and other channels. <coughs> um, and then thirdly, I'll add, UVM has regional coordinators. They have bilingual staff, uh, UVM extension, I should say, who um, spend a lot of time on farm. And so regional coordinators were, um, on farms talking both with farmers and farm workers about, hey, there's this money for repairs. How's your housing? Is there a need? And um, either those farms reached out to us or we also were able to um, identify some farms where farm workers said, we need some help with our housing. And we were able to reach out to those farms just to make sure they knew about the program and had the opportunity to apply. The uh, conservation districts might might be able to help to get the word out uh, you know we have those in every county and uh, you know they're on all types of farms so they might be able to help out on getting the word out i'm i'm wondering um did you folks work with um uh, the paul stone turkey farm on replacing their farm labor housing house is that we did not no because i know they we built not. a so, um, efficiency vermont worked with them no. uh, our program was not part of that project yeah um irene did you yeah I'm, my math skills are really rusty can you help me understand when you say you loan up to thirty thousand dollars 
that you're forgiving 10% of the principal per year? What What is one of your clients paying? Are they paying just interest? Or are they paying interest plus principal until those 10 years elapse? Yeah, they, actually they have no payments. So there are no yeah. payments due. It's a zero, there no, there's no interest. Wow. Um, there would okay. only so be a repayment. Okay. It, it's, a, it's essentially, yes, it's an interest. It, it works essentially like a grant, but it's secured because we want to ensure that the housing's being used for farm worker housing. That's amazing. Yeah. So you yeah, just want we, them to stay. We, as we long as it. it's an active farm with farm labor, Same. labor Same. using okay. the housing. And, and we want to also make sure that the housing is maintained um, for the term Thank of you. the loan. Yeah. yeah, super. And Irene. Yes. We, we've been working, the Ag Committee worked on this for maybe the last five years. Yeah. And then finally, uh, between Dan Baker and Buster or somebody, you remember yeah. Buster's Caswell. Like, Caswell. Caswell. Yeah. yeah, Buster. I mean, he used to be here every day. Yep. And uh, when are you, uh, <laughs> when are you going to start on farm labor housing? Well, next week. Well, we got to get going on that. <laughs> uh, but he was uh, a very uh, strong supporter, and uh, you know, he he kept us on our toes uh, uh, to get that done, and not that. We just had too many balls in the air uh, to uh, get to that, but we finally got to it. And VHCB was, uh, you know, a great player, positive yeah. player in all that, and uh, and so it's, I think it's worked very well from what I understand, and I think from your remarks and uh, it's worked well. Uh, with for you folks at Champlain Housing, so um, keep up the good work, and we're going to get our farm labor uh, into some decent housing uh, if we keep moving uh, forward. So, any other questions? No, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you for your support for farm labor housing and for VHCB. It's really the support for VHCB that's made it possible. So thank you for, for your continued support and thanks for having us in today. Well, yesterday, um, well, no, well, yesterday we added that, it was earlier last week, but I think today we're gonna vote on uh, giving uh, VHCB a couple of bucks for housing, uh, 20, 20, an additional 27 five. Uh, we voted it out committee and it's yeah it got voted out of committee and it's on the floor in the senate today and two of us are two of us aggies are on appropriations so that kind of helps when those issues uh come along um so um hopefully there'll be some adequate funding for into the future uh, to help correct this issue so thanks abby so who, uh, thank you well i think that's it for us we had um one more witness lined up who unfortunately had to um cancel yesterday yep. so i think that i think this is us unless you have additional questions uh, that's great yeah um, you gotta go up to the house or we're going to go up to the house when they're off the floor, yes. And, yeah. And thank you um, well, for the additional support. You know, we didn't have a chance to, to talk about this today, but um, also I know you've been a support for the additional $10 million for uh, organic dairy yeah. farmers. And that's something that certainly Vermont Land Trust has supported. So hope to see that. Yeah, well. do you, you must work with quite a few of those yep. farmers. and. Uh, <clears throat> it uh, it's hard in the BA uh, yeah. you know you don't fire up a, a new program and, and we haven't set that up yet but the chair of the probes has given us that uh, 
that request to figure that out and how how to do it in an equitable and fair way. And but I I think the uh, you know the support is there. We just got to figure out how to do it and where it's going to be uh, managed and and uh, so next. I think next week we got uh, quite a bit on that uh, on that subject to start and uh, the old you know the old story chase the money uh, the, the what we need to figure out or for the future is we want to fix it so they don't have to come back next year and and ask uh, for more money yeah. and there I don't I haven't had one negative senator uh, speak up on against helping me. Uh, it's just trying to figure out who's who's getting what share of the money and is somebody keeping more than they should and you know, do we figure out how to get some of that extra money, if there is any extra, back to the farmer? And uh, it's uh, it's always uh, a difficult issue uh, to to figure out. Uh, I mean, we've done it before, so uh, we ought to be able to. But it was 25 years ago, and. Uh, the, you know, if you you got uh, 100 pounds of milk, you you've got uh, 10 gallons, uh, 10 gallons uh, in a hundred weight, and you know if the farmer gets uh, uh, 32 of those dollars. Uh, if you if the average selling price, which we got to figure out is ten dollars you've got a hundred dollars in the pot to start with and if the farmer's getting 32 where's the other 68 going and you've got the processor and then some trucking and then the retail sales and um, when when we did that study 25 years ago or so what we f found out was the retailers keeping way more money than they should have been. And uh, so then you've got to fight with, with those folks. But um, it'll be interesting to see. I think the money will go to the farmer way before we get that part all figured out. But, we need to report that back to our appropriations committee, and uh, the the chair has a, basically said that we would do a bill um, and have it take effect upon passage. So you know we haven't got to wait until June to stop uh, the bleeding. Uh, that's that's good. Yeah, and so we're you know we're coming together on. That. It, uh, it looks like it's it's going to work its way out, but we've got a little lifting to do to get it done. And, and uh, so uh, we didn't talk about universal school meals except for asking asking if um, Abby uh, uh, asking yeah. Gabby whether or not they were selling into the schools, but. It, uh, you know, it's a program that the Senate Ed Committee uh, worked on, and we was kind of instrumental in making sure local foods were part of that process. And the reports that we've heard back from uh, the school people is that the local foods has really made a a big difference for the farmer as well as the children eating uh, wholesome fresh food and uh, so I uh, hope, hope that you can get into that market eventually and uh, 
help help your sales this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if there if there are no other questions uh, from the committee, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. Thanks, 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 thanks so much. Thanks, thanks everybody. Nice to be with you. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Drive safely. Yes, you all drive safely as well. This is thunderstorms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I might. <laughs> you gotta take the bad news and good, Ken. <laughs> when they build that monument, like uh, That's right. Sears says, uh, you gotta, you gotta be the guy that stood there strong and rugged. Um, if, if we got others coming to be naming after you. Yeah, right, right. We got. Ten minutes. Okay, I'm sure. If, if you want to take a little break. Thank you. Yeah. Sure.